And we're now joined by Seattle Kraken CEO Todd Lewicki. Todd, happy All-Star weekend. Great to see Jordan Everly get his first All-Star goal in franchise history yesterday. Uh, what's it been like for you seeing and sometimes experiencing so many of these firsts for this organization? Well, it's, it's super cool. And it was super cool to see him in the All-Star game. And uh, the prior week, our first uh, shutout. So, you know, these are great moments. And I know that I'm enjoying them. And I know our fans are enjoying them, too. And just last week, as you mentioned, uh, Philip Grubauer getting his first career sh or first shutout with the Kraken. And to the team's credit, they've shown a market improvement since we spoke with Ron Francis a couple of weeks ago. How have your feelings evolved over the last few months about the performance of this team? Well, you know, I've done this before. Uh, I've done it before in the NHL. I did it before in the MLS. Uh, and expansion is not uh, for the faint of heart. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, it's tricky, um, but I'm so proud of these players. Each and every one of these guys is helping lay the foundation for a team that's going to be great for years to come, and I'm just super grateful. Uh, we've lost 17 games by goal. Uh, that's not so easy, uh, but, you know, I think what's emerging here is a style of play. We're a hard team to play against, and I I'm really proud of that. Uh, but this wasn't a one-year plan. Uh, this was a multi-year plan. We were going to take the core group of players taken in the expansion draft. We're going to add. We're going to get involved in free agency. But we're primarily going to build this team through the draft. And I'm so excited by the early results there and, and what Ron and his team uh, did last summer. Yeah, Ron talked about the overall, overall plan, also gave us an idea of the timeline, at least hoping for it to be a little shorter than five years. How does that line up with the expectations of ownership? And what does ownership need to see in order to feel like things are moving in the right direction? Well, I think they are moving in the right direction. But when you look at that draft class uh, right now, Matty Berniers is uh, in China representing the U.S. Olympic team. Uh, Riker Evans, who was picked in the second round, is just playing brilliant hockey. He's a great assist man. And you know, it's the, the guy in the third round, Ryan Winterton, who uh, in the last six games scored 12 points. Not that we're counting. But, um, <laughs> you know, these are... These are really exciting prospects for us. I'd say the other important thing is the players are proud to pull this sweater on. They're proud to wear the S. They love this community. They love our fans. All of these things bode so well for the future. So I'd say to our fans, be patient. We have a plan, and we're right on track. We are going to be a very strong team to come. We have great facilities. We have great fans, and we have owners willing to spend to the cap. Well, the last time we spoke, it was right after the home opener. I know there were a number of challenges that weekend. Great to see all the improvements at the arena since then, especially the launch of the new pregame program. What's been the overall feedback you've been getting from fans, good and bad, so far? Well, it's, it's been a hard year to be a fan. Uh, you know, uh, I would have never thought that we would have launched this enterprise in the midst of a global pandemic. Um, and it's been hard on our fans, asking them to come and wear a mask but to cheer. Uh, you know, the secondary ticket market has been a challenge. But the fans are really the hero of this story, and they've been the hero of this story from day one. When they showed up on March 1st, 2018, the way they did, and they haven't stopped since. So we owe them greatness. And, you know, to tell you the truth, Aaron, the introductions are definitely improved, but there's not anything in our enterprise that we don't think we can do substantially better. And that's the kind of organization that our fans deserve, is one that is constantly striving to get better. And we're going to continue to improve every game, every month, every season. So can you get a little more specific? Any changes you might see coming soon in terms of improving the fan experience at home games? Yeah, there's fantastic things coming. Uh, you know, we've got, uh, we're only halfway through the season. Our skills contest is uh, next Saturday. But we're going to continue to lay things in on, on in the game and presentation. But we've got some very exciting announcements as well off the ice. Um, and so this isn't an organization. Our pedigree isn't one to rest. And I know a lot of people judge us from, you know, the, the first puck drop. But when you look at what has been achieved by this organization, from building this arena to building the training center, at the Kraken Community Iceplex, we're going to draw a million people this year. More people will come there to our, than to our games. And to pull that off in a global pandemic, and then I know you're taking a future trip down to, down to the beautiful Coachella Valley. Check out what we're building there. I'm really, really proud of what that arena and what that team is going to mean to our long-term competitiveness. The plans we've laid out, we've achieved. The winning will come on the ice 
and the great fan experience will continue to get better. Quickly on the fan experience, I know uh, it's a lot of money for a beer right now. Are you going to bring those prices down at all? Yeah, I mean, we actually are going to do a little price adjusting here midway through the season. You know, there, there are, you know, we check prices out against all other venues all the time. But, uh, you know, there's beer available there. A can of beer can be had for under 10 bucks. It's still not cheap. I remember <laughs> as a young guy at a VFW hall buying them for 50 cents. But, but we are going to do some family pricing on our concessions. We are a listening organization. We listen every day. We listen every game. Uh, and while this isn't for the faint of heart, I wish we could give away the beer for free. <laughs> Uh, but we do have some bills to pay. It was privately financed, uh, and it's really trying to find balance. But we've heard the fans, and we know that they want some family price items, uh, you know, items throughout the arena that are quote unquote family priced, and and we understand all the beer, uh, and that there is some some new pricing coming. We'll love to hear that you are listening to the fans, and you always have. Uh, we got a brand new team dog, Davy Jones. By the way, a winning record since unveiling Davy Jones. Uh, you were also the mastermind of the 12th man and blitz with the Seahawks. So you want to break some news tonight and unveil the new team mascot also? Well, we're going to take our time there. I did see Steve Largent, uh, of all things, Friday. He just happened to come by our offices. They were driving north. He and Jim Zorn and they came by and Steve and I talked about the 12th man and he was actually the guy that was responsible for resurrecting the 12th man. Really? He was asking about where some banners were and he asked where his number was and the number 12. That was my uh, first game with the Seahawks and I found religion that day. He also told me that day how great the fans were and I've never forgotten it and he was right. Uh, these are the greatest fans and we are going to build something worthy of their support. Give us a little time. At the very least, any hints how it's going to happen? Is it going to be at a game on social media? Well, you know, we're, we're working through that. And there's other things. Like, we, we, got a, we got some other things in the hopper. And, you know, one of the challenges we had the building and with the introductions is we literally got the building the day before. Uh, so it took time. And that uh, pregame that you see required rigging and gridding and setup. We now are really starting to hit our stride and we're getting stronger. And for instance, doing a skills competition this weekend, that was something that the league wasn't encouraging early on, but we're now seeing maybe this dark cloud lifting. We are gonna have a fantastic event. Uh, we've already sold 12,000 tickets, 100% of the proceeds go to charity. We are starting to hit our stride and these fans deserve it. And I'm excited uh, to report. Well, you said, given the circumstances uh, recently, that launching this franchise has really been the hardest thing you've ever done. Hindsight is always twenty twenty, but t take me back a few years ago. If your brother Tim had come to you and said, hey, we're going to build this arena, it might be way over budget, you're going to have to deal with a pandemic that delays construction and wreaks havoc on the launch of the team, community outreach d directly impacts the first t season of play also, you think you still would have taken this job, and, and why or why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was uh, the chief operating officer at the NFL. They've had a little bit of a challenging week. But, you know, uh, to tell you the truth, my love for the fans here, uh, the fans have made my dreams come true. They turn, you know, uh, Seahawks games, it's the loudest stadium in the world. The success that was had with the Sounders, I was involved with the startup of the golf tournament here, the Boeing Classic. These fans have been the joy of my life to work for them. And so the answer is yes. <laughs> Despite everything we've faced, believe it or not, and as corny as it can sound, the idea that we're going to pay off the fans for their belief and passion, I can't wait. It's my, it's really my life mission. And uh, I'm, I wish we had won more games. I wish some of those 17 one goal games, had, half of them had gone our way, a third of them. But long term, we're super confident in what we're building here. The pieces are in place to build a terrific, terrific organization. And by the way, it's not the only team that's going to play in that building. Um, and we're not going to rest until we get these things done. So let me take you right there. I, I know the NBA is always going to come up. And I know the priority is to respect the process and follow the NBA's lead on this one. But if they were to come to you tomorrow and say, hey, we're ready, would you be able to say from both an economic standpoint and a community standpoint, Seattle is ready to with this arena and this ownership group, whoever it might be, we can make it work. Let us give the presentation. Well, there's two things you really need. I, I actually, I'll rescind that. There's a few things you need uh, to make it work. First, you need a market and a fan base. And I almost skip by that because it's assumed we have a fantastic market and there's a legacy fan base there, but then you need an arena 
capable of hosting the team and you need an economic package capable of hosting the team and we have both hey we're going to get uh, we've seen some big time basketball in the building already seattle university plays in the building we had a great gonzaga alabama game but the storm are bringing their championship ways into the building and they're going to fill it and it's a fantastic thing anyone who's seen our building at a basketball setup says it's amazingly compelling the team will come at some point in time we're simply not going to get in front of the process we're going to allow the process to play out we're going to show the great and utmost respect to adam silver who uh, i consider a friend and there's other owners uh, who will cheer us on but it won't come until the time is right but when the time is right we are absolutely 100 percent prepared well, we love to hear that, and you mentioned it. If the Gonzaga game and the Seattle U games are any indication, the arena does look great for basketball, and we cannot wait for the Storm to play there this year. Uh, are we going to get a statue of Sue Bird for the arena? A and will it be up before her career is over? Because I go back, the only other player I can remember having a statue up before their career was done is Michael Jordan in Chicago, and Sue Bird is definitely in that stratosphere of legends. Mark my words. <laughs>